What up, what up, I am Mr. Preezy, and today we are diving into the wonderful world of Adobe Atmos. But it's not the way you think. Today, I start my journey on setting up Adobe Atmos rig on a budget. I won't go into detail about what Adobe Atmos is, but feel free if you need clarification and some detailed information about it, check out this video by my good friend, Jonathan Morrison. He deep dives on how it all works and as well as his massive setup that I'm very, very jealous of, from the Genelec monitoring system to the very stylish sound panels, all of which cost a pretty penny. When I look at my bank account, nope, is the immediate response. However, it sent me on a path to see if it was even possible to set up an 11 speaker system and a sub for Atmos and stay within my very limited and very, very shrinking budget. I had the opportunity to visit John's studio and listen to Adobe Atmos music in that setup and it's very life-changing. I knew I had to have that in my studio. Aside from the money part, I have quite a few other limitations. This, is a small room. That Genelec sub that John uses would have took up half my floor space on its own. Also seeing that I'm in a newly built house, I'm not ready to permanently mount speakers in my ceiling. So figuring out a way to elevate the height speakers was and is an ongoing challenge. And again, space is an issue, so how am I gonna fit 11 huge monitors in here? Or I could go smaller. So to start things off, my studio was set up for a basic stereo mix with two KRK Classic 8s and one 10 inch sub. These are generation threes of those monitors, but I've been using KRK since the original generation one Rocket 8s. With that being said, these are what I'm familiar with, so I really wanted to stay within that system. Plus, I know they are fairly reasonable to get, seeing that I would need quite a few of them. I also had a pair of Event 2020 eight inch monitors sitting in the corner, as well as John gifting me a pair of iLoud MTM monitors. The dilemma at this point was size. Do I buy more Rocket 8s or the seven inch version or the five inch version? Ultimately, my first purchase was one Rocket 5 because it was the cheapest way for me to do a proof of concept and quickly set up a 7.1 monitoring system with what I already had, which would at least get me listening to the bed of Adobe Atmos mix without the height speaker channels. The Rocket 5 came in the mail and the size was perfect. But now I need to get multiple outputs from my interface. I already had a Focusrite Scarlett Ni6 here, which has four outputs, but I needed eight more. The Focusrite Scarlett 18i20 has entered the chat. Making these two interfaces into an aggregate device in Mac OS will give me all the outputs I needed, and I'm still within my budget. So that's it, right? Nope. How am I gonna set these monitors up where they need to go? Stands, poles, a bookshelf? I went through all these options. Remember when I said I wasn't ready to drill into these walls? Well, Stands it is. Fast forward to a bunch of extension cord and XLR purchases, stands, power strips. The total cost to get what I needed wasn't as bad as I thought it would be. So here's a summed up version of what I bought to get Adobe Atmos within my budget and size limitations. I got one Rocket 8 for my center channel to match the two that I already had, then six Rocket 5s for the surrounding speakers, but I kept the iLoud MTMs for my rear height speakers because why not? They sound good and they match the fives fairly well. Plus, it saved me a little dough. Got a couple of pair of stands and that's it. All in all, it cost me about 2,200 bucks. That's not bad compared to the 60 or 70 grand if you wanted to go with Genelec monitors and an Avid interface. In the end, I'm fully monitoring Dolby Atmos using Logic Pro X, and with the help of the Loopback app, I can play back Dolby Atmos music from Apple Music. You may ask, well, Preezy, how does it sound? If you're familiar with the KRK monitors, you'll know they sound amazing. Clarity, punch, detail, and way more balanced than I expected. In the future, there are a few changes I'm gonna to make to the setup, one of which is finding a better way to raise my height speakers. For now, my front speakers are on a C-stand with a projector platform attached, which I have to say is pretty clever on my part. And the rear height speakers are on light stands because the MTM monitors have the same connection at the bottom of the speaker. So that was the easy install. But as soon as I get a better solution, the goal is to replace the MTMs with another pair of Rocket 5s. And there it is, my Adobe Atmos setup on a budget. 
for a fraction of what the big boys pay, but the same capabilities. Now, I'm always open to suggestions on how to make my setup better, so feel free to drop that in the comments. Or if you wanna tell me how good of a job I did, you can definitely drop that too. But mainly for those of you that are looking to get Adobe Atmos in your studio, but don't have the funds like the big kids, hopefully, this helps. It can be done. Please subscribe to the channel because this is going to be a thing. We are definitely going head first into the Adobe Atmos world. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next video.